Hi, this is a brief tutorial on how to install call management. To start with, you will insert the CD, which will bring the installer. You might have a zip file that you've downloaded from our website. You can unzip it so that you can see all the contents. And all you need to do is to click on installer and that will bring up the screen. Now you've got three options here. One is to install demo software, which is over here. One is to install a client software. And the first one, which is to install server software. In this tutorial, we'll look at installing server software. So to start the process, all you do is click on that button. It gets grayed out and in the background, it looks at uh, what files are there and fires up. The first thing it will try and install is a SQL server. It's a Microsoft SQL server. Uh, the only reason why this uh, may come up with an error, if at all, will be if you're missing your .NET 3.5 service pack 1. But if it does, it will come up with a message and it will give you some helpful links where you can download .NET and get it installed on your machine. Uh, if you see that, you may need to install uh, .NET and restart your machine before you can continue the installation. But I do have a .NET install on this machine, so this should go smoothly. So right now you see that DOS window at the top, which is where you will see some messages coming through. That's just a SQL Server log, kind of informing the user that it's doing something, but it does take around five minutes to do the installation of the SQL Server. then you may see the screen coming up it's just looking for all the required files and checking if it's if it can install SQL Server if it goes through that then you won't have any problems this is where it may try and find if .NET is installed and come up with an error message saying that you need .NET 3.5 installed okay so now it's gone through that uh, primary checks and now it's actually doing the installation it's just there's a simple progress bar. The whole uh, installation of the SQL Server is fully automated, so you don't have to select what to install, which directories you need to install it on, what authentication you need. All you need is to do is to really watch it uh, go through the process. Okay, so it's installed the SQL Server. The second step it will now do is to build some tables uh, in the server and then it will come up with this wizard which is to install the software that runs on the SQL server again here you don't need to do much apart from accepting the license terms you should read the terms by scrolling them down and you can see what the terms and conditions are for this software then go next and you can just literally use the default options there's nothing really you need to select uh, this process is fairly quick it shouldn't take more than 30 seconds to a minute to go through this installation and as you can see it's gone through almost there copying some new files right now and then finally it will come up with this finish button you click finish and all the software is installed now at this stage it will then bring up a screen to take some of the user details and uh, see if there's call recording required. Okay, so this next thing is asking, do you, are you installed call recording? If you're not installing call recording, you can just simply click no. Otherwise you click yes and it brings up a friendly diagram showing you how to put the cables in a call recording box. And then once the box is plugged in, you need to just click on install drivers and it brings up a visit to install the drivers. And you click next and it straight away says drivers installed finish. It may come up with a warning saying this driver is not registered with Microsoft. Uh, do you still wish to install it? So please accept that. It's not registered with Microsoft but it is uh, the genuine driver for the for the boxes. Click finish if you're installing outside United Kingdom, you can select other. Otherwise, it's just United Kingdom UK. 
click OK and then it will ask you for the company name address right so I've filled this form up and you can see the details are there now and you simply click next the second thing it will ask you is uh, the software's got some alarming features so you can send you an email to say your system stopped working uh, or something's gone wrong and we're not receiving data so all it needs to know is what are your working hours so it knows that between these times it should expect some data every few minutes so I'll just put from 9 to 17 and we'll just say we don't work on weekends but you can tick this and it will look for even the weekends and you can decide what time you work on the weekends and then it's, it's already put the email there which you entered on the previous screen to say where to send the email if there's an alarm that's triggered you can include customer information if you're a dealer and you want these alarms coming back to you in this case we won't tick that we'll just go next so the next thing uh, is the notifications set up so you can set some notifications in the software so every night it can send out how many calls you've had today how many calls you've recorded today and what's the percentage of recorded calls where we were not able to do extension matching that percentage is any higher than uh, and a single digit number then then it's something that we need to look at so you can send these uh, notifications to an email address again you can include customer information and then we go next then it will ask you to put some SMTP settings so you can put your SMTP server name a username and password if your SMTP requires a password and the email address where which will be used as the address for sending all the emails that the software will send there's a helpful test button here you can click that button and it will tell you if the connection to the SMTP server is successful uh, if it's successful you could be rest assured that all the emails functionality will work then you go next then it will ask you what are your auto attendant or voicemail ports so you can put a range and single port so you can use a combination of those as you got example string uh, just below that box same for UCD groups you can say these are my UCD groups and you can put others as well you can put as many as you like it's important to put this information in here correctly because when a call finishes on any of these ports we know all this this call has been answered by your phone system but it's not been answered by a human so we know that we need to mark that call as unanswered call uh, if you don't put this information in we won't be able to correctly show unanswered calls and then you click finish and that setup completed successfully and the very last thing it will ask is what's the IP address of your phone system and you can put IP address here I'll just put one in and click OK I'll say please restart your PC to start recording your calls click OK as soon as I hit yes it will restart your machine and once it's back up and running your system will be fully functional thank you for watching this training video